We have a very exciting session today. We have uh, Emily from the IAS uh, Secretariat who will be giving us an update and you here are very privileged. You will be the first one to get a snapshot of how actually the conference will work and look. So uh, join us and, and you will be able to see that. Then we will have Abina who will be telling us about uh, her experience participating in uh, AIDS conferences previously, the activism and how what it means as a person from the community to be in an AIDS conference and to participate and what kind of activities we engage with. Unfortunately, our third speaker is presently ill. So Mauro cannot join us, but you know, we're part of the staff, so we will cover it. Uh, so with that, I want to give the word to Emily and Abina to introduce themselves briefly before we continue. Emily. Certainly, thank you so much, Erica, and good afternoon, good morning, everyone. We are delighted, as uh, Erica said, to give you all a sneak peek at what the AIDS 2020 virtual is going to offer all of our conference participants. And we're really looking forward to uh, seeing you all there. Thank you, Abina. We're having some technical issues with Abina. Um, but meanwhile, let me tell you that after our uh, panelists present and share some very important information with you, we will have a uh, opportunity, you will have opportunity to, uh, to ask questions and you know, you will get the answers uh, from our panelists. So very, very good. Um, Welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. And with this, I'm gonna give the word to Emily, who is gonna take us through an introduction of what to expect, how it will look, and everything about AIDS 2020 virtual. Go ahead, Emily. Great, thank you so much, Erica. Give me one second. I'm just gonna pop up my slides and hopefully that will be showing up on all of your screens shortly. So. As I said, we are absolutely delighted to have this opportunity today to give you all the sneak peek of the virtual conference, uh, the first virtual international AIDS conference. So as all of you probably know, the 2020 conference was always going to be a little bit different. It was the first time that the conference was going to be organized in San Francisco and Oakland, two sides of the Bay in California. Um, and then back in March, the IAS Governing Council, as well as the Conference Coordinating Committee for AIDS 2020, which GATE is a esteemed member of, made the decision, the tough decision, to take the conference uh, virtual. As you can imagine, there were quite a number of changes that needed to be made in order to uh, take a conference as large and complex as ours and pivot it to a virtual format. The first big change has been the length of the conference, the duration of it. In order to give the maximum amount of time possible for all of our pre-conference participants, the pre-conferences will be opening up, as you can see, next Tuesday already, Tuesday the 30th of June, and running all through the week to the 3rd of July. Then on the 4th and 5th of July, the on-demand content will become available. This will enable anybody that is coming on, any delegate that is coming onto the platform to access all of the program committee designed content as well as all of the abstract content. So the uh, e-posters, oral abstract sessions, um, as well as the bridging sessions that kind of pull the different facets of the conference um, together. So that's what we internally lovingly call our AIDS 2020 Netflix. Then on the 6th of July, the original opening date of the conference, we will have our opening sessions uh, running uh, at four different times during the day. We will also at that point open up the Global Village and launch the youth program as well as start our program of community leadership and scientific workshops. Those will be running continuously throughout the week. We also get to open up our exhibition, both in the Global Village and on the delegate side, 
and start having an absolutely packed day of satellites. On the 7th, 8th, and 9th of the conference, we will add in the live sessions to the conference, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a moment. As you can see, the satellite exhibition continue, and then on Friday, we start the day off with the closing and then go straight into the COVID conference, which, similar to the Global Village, is free and open access to the general public. So how do you take a conference that has people from 175 countries and make it accessible around the world? Since this conference was originally supposed to take place in San Francisco, we pegged the conference scheduling to San Francisco time. And fortunately, the hour between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. in San Francisco is the hour on the planet when most of the people in the world are awake. So that will be when we have our first prime session. The prime sessions are a new combination of the plenary sessions, the special sessions, as well as the rapporteur summaries and the community movies, community videos uh, and, and broadcasts. So those, as you can see, are the yellow slots that will be running it four times during the day. So in any given 24 hours, you'll have four different times where you will have brand new live content. And this is again between Tuesday the 7th and Thursday the 9th. So the slots in San Francisco timing are 7 a.m., 1 a.m., 5 p.m., uh, sorry, 7 a.m., 1 p.m., 5 p.m., and midnight. Um, here in Europe and, and Africa, that will be 4 p.m., 10 p.m. Then there's one for the truly dedicated at 2 a.m., uh, but then again at 9 a.m. All of the content will be recorded and available for when people do wake up and want to see the content if they miss something while they happen to be asleep. As you can see, each of these prime slots, the yellow slots are bracketed by these blue hours, which is when we will have the late breaker sessions as well as our concurrent satellite sessions. As you can see, the conference program remains as robust as ever. We have a huge variety of activities taking place through the Global Village and the youth program. And as I mentioned before, on Friday, we'll have the COVID-19 conference. Both of those will be completely open access to the public. Also, we have the full uh, program uh, that's divided between invited sessions and submission-based sessions. And we have over 2,000 abstracts that are going to be presented, um, a robust uh, program of the symposium bridging sessions, and as I said, um, a wide variety of pre-conferences and satellite sessions. One of the fabulous features of running a 24-hour virtual conference is that some of the satellite sessions and workshops will be able to be played multiple times. So delegates that might miss the session the first time around will be able to see it in a replay later on during the day or during the week. So what can attendees expect? We've listed four of them here, but I do encourage everybody to visit the conference website and click on the page that says why attend. It gives a fabulous outline of all of the richness that the virtual conference, as well as some of the new perks that we're discovering, will be able to offer. So the round the clock access is something that's really going to enable a much, much broader accessibility for the content of the conference. We We'll have everything that we had at the, the in-person conference, um, except the overpriced muffins and the freezing air condition um, of your, your in-person conference. Uh, the interactivity and networking features have been something that we've put a lot of effort in order to ensure that people have the ability to chat. And as always, the International AIDS Conference is breaking ground and we will be the first virtual conference to provide an activist platform. So 
what will this new venue look like? As you remember at the start of this uh, presentation, I had two pictures of the venues that we had planned to be in. Here's where we're going to be instead. So when delegates first enter the conference, they will arrive in the main lobby. As you can see, there are the different rooms where, or different hallways that people will be able to uh, enter and then see the auditorium, the pre-conferences, workshops and exhibition. There's the activist lounge over here on the right and the global village over here on the left. We know this is a new experience for lots of people. Uh, so front and center, we will make sure that there is a help desk that will be staffed 24 hours a day. In the main auditorium is where all participants will be able to access the prime sessions that I told you about, but as well the on-demand sessions, the e-poster presentations, as well as all of the satellite sessions. The activist lounge is where we will have our community activist liaison facilitating and, and generating the conversation that we hope the activist community will bring to our lounge and ensure that the, as always, the important conversations that don't happen in the main auditorium are still hosted and had here at the, the conference. On the Global Village side, we will have, uh, again, similar lobby. Uh, this time, the hallways are slightly different with the different content that is available in the Global Village. Um, and as always, there's going to be the help desk and media center access and a way to, for delegates to be able to pop back out into the main conference program. The Global Village will also have an auditorium where in addition to film screenings, people will be able to participate in interactive workshops. They'll be able to visit art exhibits. They'll be able to attend sessions, meet the experts. Um, and again, the broad, rich variety of, of content that we have come to love and expect at the, the Global Village. The Global Village exhibition space will as always be the combination of NGO booths as well as networking zones. The booths will be staffed by the NGO themselves to ensure that there's always somebody to, to interact with and engage with during the, the conference. Um, there will be chat functionality either one-on-one -on -one or with larger groups. And in the networking zones, those organizers will be able to pull together and as always, run their own programming throughout the week. And as I said before, there will be a 24 hour staffed help desk. The help desk will provide not only technical support, but also um, the, the moderation um, and community uh, serve as our community watchdog. If any of our delegates are feeling uh, that something's not quite right, something's going on in the chat, it's making them uneasy. Uh, then the help desk will be able to step in and uh, be the place of support for all of our, our delegates. One last thing that I wanted to end the presentation with is that it would be absolutely fabulous if everyone on the, the webinar would participate in our demonstration of resilience, sharing their story of resilience. If you haven't already had the opportunity to do so, we warmly encourage you to visit the Profiles in Resilience. You can find Erica's there on our homepage as well. And we know that everybody in the AIDS community, particularly at this time, is, in, is living the resilience experience and theme. So we want to open the door and hear all of your voices. So if you haven't done so already, please do share your story of resilience. Happy to, I know I blew through that pretty quickly because there was a lot to cover, but if there are any questions, I can take them now, or as Erica said, um, we can cover them at the end of the present, at the end of the webinar. 
Thank you very much, Emily. And we already have some questions that people have been sending to Gate. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will be asking them, but if people in the audience also want to ha uh, have some questions, please do, uh, you can use the raise hand option and give you the word to ask your question. But in the meantime, let's hear from Abina and let's hear about what is the experience of participating in an AIDS conference? Abina, let, tell us a little bit about how that feels, what do you do, what do you gain? Yes, so, um, you know, somebody like, um, uh, you know, a trans activist who's been working for some amount of time, uh, especially also very closely with GATE and, and, you know, IRGP and everybody, we look forward for this kind of a conference, especially the AIDS conference. The reason why uh, is because I have seen from so many years, I've been part of these conferences from a couple of years. And what I've seen is that these, these places provide a huge opportunities for young leadership. Uh, to come together, uh, you know, and talk about their issues, uh, to to gain the confidence about the work that they have to take back to their countries and work around with that. Seeing the inspiring leaders like Erica and other people who who are present there and talk to them. So I'm also looking forward for more and more trans engagement uh, within these platforms where, uh, you know, these young uh, trans people who will be part of this, like me, you know, who will be part of this entire conference will be able to get to hear a lot of people, will be able to share experiences and at the same time will be able to also demonstrate and exchange the ideas on how can we take forward our aid response. I would also like to congratulate and thank uh, you know um, uh, the, the committee who has managed to take a heroic step of putting this entire conference or the virtual spaces. I think this is a new normal. I think this is the, this is the power of resilience. I just feel that is uh, what you guys are doing is amazing and a lot of other conferences will also follow the same procedure in future uh, because COVID is not any more um, normal as in. But I'm just trying to say to you is that for my, for me particularly, the experiences of being part of each conference is that, uh, you know, uh, working around with specifically on donor engagement, uh, meeting a lot of people from the networks, uh, transgender networks, any other network giving ideas and perspective about various other aspects which is around TB and HIV comorbidities or the latest invasions and researches which are happening on HIV responses. Uh, I think the fantastic place that I think GATE and everybody has been putting forward is, 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 the, is, 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 is the space that we were putting into the global villages, which was an extremely important space for us because, you know, it talks just beyond our work. It talks about the culture. It talks about the art. It talks about the amazing trans community um, who, who, who were there, visible, doing marches, talking about people about uh, how trans visibility and trans health matters the most. Um, and at the same time, uh, it is also a huge amount of opportunities for the capacity building and advocacy with the new donors, with the new implementers, the new work that we have been uh, doing um, uh, in, in spaces. So thank you so much, Emily, for explaining this entire process. But I'm really looking forward for this opportunity. This is new for me, but I'm quite excited because uh, you know, it, it is going to be repetitive. So it is not like, for example, you attend and you forget, but you have time to contemplate. And if you want to repeat to certain sessions, you can go. You can revisit those sessions. Uh, you can post the questions over there. You can ask, you can interact with people. You can get in touch with them, uh, ask so many questions. So, so in a way, I'm quite excited about that. And I think I, I'm really, really looking forward for a month of July, for especially for this conference, uh, where I would, uh, I would look forward that... Uh, you know, it will help me to, to, to grow my experiences, to learn and meet new people um, virtually. Uh, and at the same time, making sure that uh, we continue the strong response about our uh, goal towards 2030 on HIV AIDS um, agenda uh, on, on acquiring 1990-90. This is one step to show that we are not going to stop. We are going to make sure that is we are going to make our HIV AIDS responses more and more stronger and uh, these opportunities will help us to move forward positively on that. Thank you, Erika. Thank you very much, uh, Emily and Abina. Very great information here. I want to remind everybody, if you have a question, you can write it down on the chat or you can use the raise your hand uh, function to ask your questions. But we have been receiving a lot of questions from before the, 
from the moment AIDS 2020 virtual was announced. So Emily, I'm gonna uh, be asking some of them to you and Abina. So Emily, first let's start with this question. Um, in the virtual space, and now that we are having a conference, um, in past conferences, the, one of the most um, important things that activists and community look forward to is the opportunity to network and interact with other community members, with scientists, with leaders in different thematics. So how would the level of interaction be and how does this look like in AIDS 2020 virtual? Sure. Um, we are, we're very excited that the virtual platform gives uh, us the ability now to have a live interactive question and answer session with our plenary speakers. It's as many of you that have attended the AIDS conferences before know, the plenary halls, 6,000 people, there's no way you can get up uh, to, to a microphone and ask a question. Thanks to the virtual format, we will now have at the end of every single plenary session, a live 15 minutes of Q&A where people like in this webinar will be able to send in their questions and have these incredible speakers from around the world give the uh, answers there in real time. So that's one way. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have the Activist Lounge. That's really the community's space in order to, um, to start off the conversations, as I said, that, that need to be had, that the awareness raising of different movements, different petitions, different uh, campaigns that are going on around the world. And that is really the space um, for those dialogues and those interactions to, to happen. Uh, in each of the networking zones and the exhibitor booths as well, um, both in the Global Village and in the uh, delegate exhibition, there are the chat functionalities where people can enter a booth and uh, either engage in the one-on-one -on -one chats or group chats. And for all of the sessions, all of the e-posters, people will be able to leave their questions and get the responses directly from the presenter or what other virtual conferences have seen in the, the weeks leading up to this. Um, delegates themselves start answering each other's questions. And so you'll get a, a, a question from um, somebody to a presenter, but somebody else can jump in and, and raise their hand and say, oh, I've seen that or I know where to, to look for that. And so I think that's also something that we don't, necessarily see when we're on site um, with the queue of people standing at the microphone and, and waiting their turn to ask a question. Um, this is uh, really, I think, something that's going to help bring the virtual, very flat screen um, world to come to life. Thank you very much, Emily. And Abina, talking about this, uh, and you've had experiences in attending past uh, AIDS conferences. What is your, what your, your input about this? You know, uh, how has the level of engagement with the speakers been in past conference and how the possibility to chat directly with presenters uh, seem to you? I think it is quite exciting because Erica, as uh, Emily said correctly, when we used to have a speaker, uh, speaking into the plenary and other people also. We we used to wait for them to come out of the entire hall and get them and hold of them somewhere and you know talk to them. This is the direct conversation. This is like you know you are into a big plenary where you are directly asking the questions and there's a possibility where your question could be picked up and the uh, plenary speaker would be able to uh, uh, talk about it. There are many times when you listen to the speakers during the plenary sessions. There are times when you feel that is oh he should or she should have talked about those things you know i think that those are also very important things that i want to highlight from my side or from my country for my region uh, uh, it is very important for my community and this is an opportunity for us to make the plenary sessions much more productive the other thing that emily talked about is um, also uh, specifically on the activist launch that i just want to talk about it that you know, I'm, I'm still trying to understand how this entire thing is going to manage and I'm uh, hats off to you, Emily. <laughs> I hope you don't have a sleepless night before, <laughs> the, before the conference. But I'm, I'm trying to say is that I, I, the one thing that I'm really looking forward is, is 
is that it happens so smoothly i just wish it happened so smoothly i just wish that people get more and more opportunity to talk to each other and at the same time i think i hope that the the important question maybe it is small and maybe it is very insignificant but those get addressed uh, especially from the marginalized communities like transgender people because believe me there are so many times transgender people do not get opportunity to ask question this is an opportunity where we are going to have questions uh, where we are going to be part of the entire process we are going to raise the question and not just me but you know my other sisters also you, you see this beautiful michelle michelle rose also is joined uh, on the on this session she has she's in the age reversal process so like she can also ask questions so many of us can ask questions in this process and i'm really look, looking forward uh, for that i was also thinking that is uh, there are a lot of people like trans people who are going to be part of this sessions and i hope they get enough opportunity in in please i'm requesting this for youth and erica and gate and everybody that please uh, look forward that is uh, you involved engage with young trans people uh, make them part of the uh, panel discussions make them part of the poster presentation because you know we we trans people are the most visibly invisible people so you can see us but nobody wants to recognize us we are trapped into the vicious circle my friend our numbers are not there our vulnerabilities are not been noted and as a result of that lot of aids conferences because there are so many issues about innovations and other things our human rights issues gate do not reach to the people that needs to be reached out we are there to advocate but you know we are there because we matter we are part of the communities and nothing without communities can be contemplated when we talk about aids response so i think putting communities at the center spaces wherever you talked about you talked about neighbor networking spaces or you're talking about the activist launch i think this is really really important that people should be able to come up with a larger perspective uh, and also get an opportunity to share their experiences thank you erica thank you very much abina and abina you know like talking about attending this conference getting information interacting with the presenters what do you do with the information afterwards the conference you went to the conference in person or you attended the virtual conference then what what do you do with this all this information that you gather can you please share a little bit of, of what to do with it afterwards too so i think uh, when we uh, normally like when we attend a conference is not virtual but other ways uh, emily when we attend a conference sometimes those those information remains with us like for example we will circulate in our groups and our networks and other people but you know through the virtual spaces what you are talking about is that a lot of these things that is going to happen in like this webinar it is going to be on a virtual space right whatever we have talked about it it is it is accessible to everybody what erica has spoken about what i have spoken about what you have spoken as it is going to be access it is going to be there on the web for people to access understand so all those people who prop like many times in, in this kind of conferences people don't manage to reach to that conferences because they don't have resources because they don't get scholarships because they don't have an organization to back them up and various time they, they keep contemplating that oh my god i'm not been part of this big conference now they will not be able to see this with this kind of virtual spaces they can really reach to you they can really reach to the aids conference they can really reach to the important topics what we look forward is that whatever that comes out of this conference emily we are going to treasure it treasure is the right word we are going to treasure it for our networks like irgt gate other people who are doing substantial work uh, in um, you know things like the even in, you, know, you know clinic and other transgender clinics which are working they are going to treasure it they are going to keep it they are going to save it and they are going to use this for the capacity building of next generation we are not going to be forever over here but what we are trying to do is that we are going to create resources for our next generation to fight this battle much more harder we are the for forefront and actually create a difference for the people who are living with hiv and at the same time people who been uh, getting affected with hiv Thank you very much Avina. I want to remind everybody you have the opportunity to ask questions. You can write it in the chat or you can raise your hand and we'll give you the opportunity to ask the questions that you have. Uh we have some more questions Emily. So there's a question if you need to be registered to attend the pre-conferences. Yes, you need to either be registered as a conference delegate or you can register just for the pre-conference week only. 
Thank you very much. And then Emily, there's some follow-up questions about the participation and the usual activity civil society. Those, they say an important component of activism is the protest. How will this be possible in a virtual space? Really good question. Um, and we are, we, we, are giving it a shot. Remember, this is the, the first time that the uh, International AIDS Conference is a virtual one. Um, and it is the first time for a whole lot of the world to be running so many things uh, in, in this virtual uh, space. So the Activist Lounge, uh, if you remember, there's um, the chat functionality there will be curated by our community activist liaison uh, and they will together with the activist space identify those issues that are of the biggest and broadest and, and greatest importance on a regular schedule um, during the course of the conference week those issues will be highlighted in the main menu on the both the global village lobby and in the um, main lobby for all of the delegates so if you remember in the uh, in the activist lounge there was the red banner with the megaphone so when that megaphone appears on the main menu in both of those two front lobbies to the the global village space and the the conference delegate space there will be a connection to one of the big issues. So it's, it's the equivalent, if you will, of giving the activists the time behind the microphone on the plenary stage. Um, since all of that is being uh, loaded in advance, there's not quite the same functionality that we can do in the auditorium space, but we figure in that main lobby where everybody has to come in before they go anywhere else is as big a platform as, as we can put uh, for the, the virtual platform. So that will be, as I said, front and center and curated entirely by the community, the activist lounge and the community activist liaison. So it's an experiment. And if it doesn't work, let us know. Hopefully we won't be, have to do this again. But if we do, we would love to, to hear from you on how we can always make it better. Um, thank you, Emily. I think that Erica has had some um, uh, technical issues and has dropped out of the call. So um, I am just uh, going to, I'm just going to hop in here while she, she jumped back on. Um, there is a question in the chat from Stacy. Um, who has uh, said, will those who register as a delegate get an information like Emily gave at the beginning of this meeting, um, a packet to help them navigate the virtual space? So if you wanna answer that, Emily, please. Sure, so uh, not even uh, registered delegates on the conference website, because we know that plenty of people are going to be attending the conference for the Global Village. Um, on the conference website, by the end of this week, we will have user guide videos that will actually give people a click through instead of a walkthrough of the platform and narrate a bit about how people will enter the platform, get online um, and move around the, the different spaces in the virtual world. Thank you, Emily. Would you like to take Thank you, again, Emily. America? Yes, I got disconnected, so I have to connect from my phone. Technology, right? But anyway, <laughs> so talking about technology and internet access, Emily, there's a question about what is the bandwidth requirement? Will people need to have high-speed internet to join the conference? Uh, actually, no. So I um, have learned so much about technology in the last four, four months. Um, the really cool thing about our platform is we've modeled it, or not we, the guys that built it, have modeled it after uh, things like um, YouTube, where the bandwidth adjusts to the device that's pulling the feed. So if you are in a high bandwidth setting, you, that's the bandwidth that the platform will run on. If you are in a low bandwidth setting, the platform itself 
will adjust and you will still be able to experience the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So there's a couple of follow-up questions. Um, can delegates also chat directly with each other? Uh, yes, absolutely. So um, people will be able to uh, chat directly. People will, as I said, in session spaces, in the Q&A, in the, both the on-demand sessions uh, as well as in satellite sessions or workshops, for example, people will be able to interact directly with, uh, with one another. Then there's another follow-up question about the accessibility to, like if there's gonna be help with bundles or data. Absolutely, so um, for our, our scholarship program this year is bigger than ever. Uh, we took everything that was going to be channeled into uh, getting people visas for the United States or getting them uh, hotels in San Francisco and Oakland, and we've channeled that into providing the largest amount of support possible to our scholarship recipients. Part of that support has been to uh, those that we sent out a survey to everybody, uh, all of the scholarship re recipients, asking them some technical questions about their bandwidth as well as the tools and devices and um, times that they were able to engage online. Some people only have uh, bandwidth at the office, so when the office closes, they don't have any uh, opportunity to, to surf the web and be on the platform. So out of that, we've identified about a thousand people that we will either be sending SIM cards to um, or sending unlocked SIM cards with unlimited data and a actual device. If we ascertained that uh, the, the only tool that they had was insufficient to really engage with the conference itself, we're going to be providing those folks with uh, a device as well as this unlocked uh, unlimited data SIM card for the duration of the conference. So from the 6th to the, the 10th. Thank you. Abina, there's a comment and a question. Um, so it says before when the conference was going to be held in San Francisco and Oakland, there was a lot of resistance from different community members about the issues about travel restrictions to the US. With a virtual conference happening now, uh, what does the civil society have to say about this? Thank you, Erica. I think we all are aware about the political scenario in US at this point of time. I'm not going to talk more about it. But, uh, you know, in the previous time, there has been an issue specifically with, uh, with the people in sex work uh, who did not manage to attend the conferences, like age conferences, which was happening. And, you know, there was a parallel convert. Like from India, there was a lot of sex workers who wanted to be part of the uh, age conference and they could not do it. And as a result of that, the parallel uh, uh, age conference was happening specifically in one of our uh, state called as West Bengal um, and there were a lot of restrictions a lot of people like women uh, people from marginalized groups were not getting uh, very easily visas right now I feel that is if we get the registration if they have already got some sort of a partial or full scholarship then they will be able to attend uh, attend those sessions and I also see that is even if they don't attend the sessions they can actually you know, link with the other people who have got the scholarship, be with them and attend this con uh, conference, be part of it. It is not restricted that the individual only has to be there, right? It is the device uh, with that same device. I can make 100 people, you know, look into that entire device and participate. So it is actually expanding. It is like a sponge. It is expanding more for more and more people to be part of this one. And second of all, it is not going to discriminate anybody based on their sexuality or gender or profession or race or the skin color. And that is what uh, it is a uh, transformation thing that is going to happen. So Erika, I'm, um, you know, I, I'm, I feel that is, it is a good opportunity for a lot of people to get engaged and be part of the of these virtual conferences. I, I, I'm sure that is every time it's conferences, there are always uh, feedback back and they get the feedback from the community how do you find uh, from the sessions and all those kind of things i think i anticipate and this is my personal purview that is 
lot a lot of people will come up with a lot of positive feedback about how they have been enriched with this conferences um, and i'm really thankful emily if there are certain people who have got this resources that you are talking about especially from the perspective of internet and the phone that will be really really uh, huge to support for the marginalized communities like us because a lot of transgender people survive on sex work uh, they work in a very smaller organization even gate uh, global action for trans equality uh, have been doing this pioneering research especially on transgender uh, organization financing uh, transgender work related financing and there's a data that says that it only 10% uh, uh, trans organizations get some sort of a uh, support uh, and 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 we don't have enough resources when we are implementing the grassroots level of work and this opportunity that you are providing will help lot of people to be part of this conference and i'm looking really looking forward from the community perspective um, and we are already talking to lot of our community members to to understand and be part of this process and also if they can't afford then be and meet us and you know attend the conference as a together as as, as a group for certain important session at least because then you're going to get the first hand experiences of that uh, you, you previously it used to happen that oh i attend the conference and then i tell them or i teach them or i explain to them but now it is going to be like from the horse's mouth they are going to sit there into this virtual spaces with me see that entire thing and get benefit out of it so i'm quite excited about that very good thank you very much abina and we have some comments in the chat a uh, person saying i think virtual iis needs to be invested in for future years to reach more trans people who can get to the iis and i think that's physically emily are there any plans to develop virtual iis uh, we are going to take the learning that we have uh, out of this experience and and see. I mean, I think there's it it has a, a whole lot of potential um, as as we've all been talking about people that don't have the right passport, the reputation, the the resources to get to the one place on the planet that the conference happens to be. That's a that's a huge plus and and getting the information we've always known that for every single person sitting in a conference room, there were hundreds of people back home that also needed the information. And so in that sense, having a virtual conference is really, really exciting. I think people, though, want to be with people and and the recurring question that we see time and again is how can I interact? with um, my fellow delegates? How can I interact and engage with the activism that's going to, to be taking place in the conference itself? Those moments are something that we in, in global health, we as the human race crave. And so looking ahead, we need to, we know we need to, to take a long, hard look at that. It's part of why the International Aid Society um, already a year and a half ago, launched the review of the International AIDS Conferences to make sure that we're fit for the future. Uh, the, the results of that obviously have needed to take a pivot as the rest of the world has in response to, to the COVID pandemic. Um, and so once we get the results of that review, I think certainly the new um, virtual world will obviously play a, a key part in that. So yeah, I think there, there's a lot of exciting questions ahead for, for virtual conferences and for the HIV response as well. We have one more question. It says, can you please repeat the three aspects of the conference, knowing people have to register either way? Was it all of the pre-conference activities, the Global Village throughout Conference Week and the COVID session on Friday? Can you please clarify which ones are free access? Sure. So the um, Global Village sessions starting on the 6th of, uh, 6th of July will be entirely free and open to the, the, so the Global Village and the youth program, entirely open and free. People do need to register um, for security reasons. Um, and it's, you know, like the bag check when you go into a, a physical space. This is our way of ensuring that the conference space remains safe. Um, 
So people will need to enter first name, last name, and email address uh, in order to get in. The same is true for the COVID conference on the Friday uh, that will be taking place starting 8 a.m. San Francisco time um, for the entire duration of that day. Um, again, very simple, completely free uh, re registration process that's necessary for those. The content of the conference um, will be available uh, later in the month um, for folks, but for the first crack at the, the science and the announcements that are coming out, as well as all that interactivity, you will need to, uh, you'll need to be there. Thank you very much, Emily. The, and one of the last questions we have here is about language and accessibility. So la how will language barrier be managed? We have seen in future, uh, in past conferences, there's subtitles and there's sign language. What type of accessibility will be in this conference? Sure, uh, so the platform itself comes with a translation function for the, um, the text chats. So when uh, participants are in the exhibition um, or in even the, the session chats, um, there's a, a functionality of being able to switch that between, I think it's four different, uh, four different languages. So um, people will be able to see it. In terms of sign language, we did look into this um, and the research that we were able to find was that people that did need that kind of support um, either for visual or hearing um, impairments, that their technology is built and equipped vastly better than any plugin we could put in on the, the platform itself, which would have the added deterrent, if you will, of slowing the, the bandwidth, they're adding more bandwidth required uh, to it. So bearing that in mind, knowing that people um, know best how to, to take, you know, to, to help themselves and, and cater specifically to, to their needs. Um, that's what we're, we're going with this year. Again, it's something that with a bit more time and a bit more experience, we'll be happy to get the feedback on that if there are particular uh, components that, that need tweaking. Um, but for this time around, that's uh, how, how we're managing that particular piece. Thank you very much, Emily. I want to remind everybody, Global Village and Youth Program is completely free. You can all access it. Um, GATE and IRGT, jointly together, we are having a trans-networking zone. Please follow up and you will soon read because we will have another webinar in which we'll be discussing and talking about specific trans uh, content during the AIDS conference. So we will be talking about the different sessions during the program of the conference itself, but also we will be presenting to you satellite session that the tr International Trans Men and HIV Working Group have prepared and we'll be talking about the importance of including transgender masculinities in the HIV response. We will present to you the uh, topics and information that will be available in the trans networking zone, the different program. By the way, it's available in different languages. We have programming in different languages, so please uh, be assured there's something that will call your attention. We have films, panels, sessions, videos, presentations, exciting stuff, and we will also be live there. So you will be able to hear back from the presenters and interact with us live during the Trans Networking Zone satellite session, and also we will have an NGO booth. So in the next few days, Look out for our advertisement and updates. We're gonna have another webinar in which we're gonna talk specifically about trans content and programming during the conference. And um, I want to thank Emily and Abina, but I want to give them the opportunity to leave a last message before we close the webinar. Abina, please go ahead. I think, uh, please stay tuned uh, with Gate. Stay tuned with IRGT for the forthcoming uh, our rocking work that we are going to do with our uh, sessions on the global session, Trans Lives Matters, and I think AIDS Conference Matters as well. So let's make sure that is we all make our meaningful engagement on these spaces and the resources that we have. 
use maximum maximum uh, support that we can get on these and actually reach to our community reach to the donors reach to the networking people understand and also contribute and create a better world for you and for me thank you emily we are so grateful uh to to gate for being a steadfast supporter of the uh the pivot to to our virtual uh experience we really look forward to seeing all of you there at the conference and really hope uh to get all of your feedback um so that as we said going into the future we can make these better and better um thank you for your resilience um and yeah Welcome to AIDS 2020. Thank you very much, Emily and Abina. Please don't forget, you can visit gate.ngo slash AIDS 2020, where you will find all information pertaining to AIDS 2020 virtual, every session that will be talking about trans persons or will have a transgender panelist. You can find the information right there. You can find the live sessions, the hours where you can join us. So please stay tuned and see you soon with our next webinar on transgender activism and programming at age 2020. Thank you very much and goodbye.